Let's give it a couple minutes or a minute there to kick in. Recording has started, Susan. And there we go. So, okay. So I just uh, thanks everyone for taking time tonight to to uh, join in and listen. Um, we just want to touch base with you, give you an update on the project, what you can expect, um, just to let you know who's on the line there tonight. Um, from the city, well, I'll just sort of introduce myself. I'm Susan Stephen. I'm with the Capital Engineering Group here with the city. So this is um, one of the projects that I'm uh, managing. We also have on the line uh, Kent Taze and David Morgan. They're both from CBCL, the consultant that's working on this project. They've done investigation work here and uh, they're done preliminary design and they're now uh, working on detailed design. And we also have um, Curtis Langell and Brian Irving here from the city's uh, real estate group. Uh, there are spots and we'll go through that, that we are going to be looking for easements. Um, most of those locations are your parking spots. There is another, a few other spots that are actually um, owned by the association. And where we will be looking for easements, uh, actually there is already pipe and we're just looking to upsize it. But uh, we just wanted to have uh, Curtis and Brian on the line too to hear, hear what everybody has to say and if anybody has any concerns so they're aware. So when they actually uh, approach people about the easements that they're aware of what conversations have been had. So uh, with that being said, uh, maybe I'll throw it over to Kent uh, Kent and David, they're from CBCL, and they can kind of go through what this project is all about. Kent sharing his screen there, so hopefully everybody, everybody can see the Candaway land sewer separation. Yep. Okay, great. Oh, well, I can. Okay, <laughs> just so uh, we started several years ago working with the city of St. John on um, sanitary sewer separation in the University Avenue area, not just within your guys uh, subdivision, but right up to the hospital and university right down. Uh, all the sewer from that area is taken down uh, Woodward Avenue into uh, uh, Boar's Head Road into the treatment process down there. And being, you know, one of the older areas in the city, it does have a lot of combined sewers where we have storm water that's influencing into the sewers. And every time you get storm water into sewers, the cost can be very high because you have to treat that as well as it provides an opportunity for storm water to get into people's homes and stuff like that through backups and stuff like that. Sewers are designed to handle, you know, municipal waste and they do have we they do have some influence from storm water, whether you know everybody sees in a manhole water can get through the cover and stuff like that. But we try to minimize it and it's it's municipalities are always doing a constant fight to try to reduce that down. But it, it's an ongoing battle because people have a tendency to hook up because they want to get it out of sight, out of mind. They don't want that flooding in their yard, so they'll hook it into the nearest structure. And a lot of times that can be sanitary manholes. And that can be more detrimental than going to a little bit of flooding in the backyard because that can back up into your sewers. So anyways, we looked at the entire University Avenue and we identified several areas within that area, some at the university, at the hospital, your guys' subdivision, and some other smaller areas where we want to get reduced down that stormwater influence into the sanitary system. And this created the project, which was the Candlewood Lane sewer separation. Uh, so in your area, there's uh, some catch basins as well as some backyard drains that are tied directly into the sanitary sewer and that don't go into the storm sewer. And a lot of that is just because there's just not a storm sewer there. Uh, you do have a storm sewer that comes in off between, and I'll just switch to a drawing here. There is a storm sewer that comes in off of University Avenue, that dark line you see there. Uh, but currently, if we tie into additional storm sewer into it, it would be considered undersized and can't handle those flows. So the project has grown from just picking up a couple of the catch basins that I'll show you on the second drawing, which is over in the back here around Civic number 90. There's a couple of catch basins, one in the yard as well as one in the roadway. And those are tied directly right now into the sanitary sewer. And as well, there are several spots, one in between, uh, in behind Civic number 107 to 121. 
there's a backyard drain that's tied into a sanitary manhole. Then in towards uh, Civic number 97, there's another backyard drain that's tied into it. So all these are tied into this current sanitary system. And, and we think, you know, in time that will be a detrimental where it will back up into the people's sanitary laterals. So this project is to remove that off and let sanitary be sanitary. Uh, people sometimes, a lot of times will ask about catch basins and, you know, what, what they can do to a sanitary sewer system. And uh, one of our uh, engineers a few years ago out in Ross, he was asked that where there was catch bases tied into the sanitary sewer. And he was able to do the calculation in the sanitary catch or the catch basin was equivalent to 200 homes. So when you remove a catch basin that's tied into a sanitary sewer, you know, it's not a continuous flow, but when it does get that peak flow, most sanitary sewers aren't built to handle that. They're built to handle like almost a continuous flow, while storm sewers are more built to handle those one in 10 year, one in five year, one in a hundred year peak storms that they're going to get. So that initiated the project. So the project is going to be a uh, storm sewer basically from 107 where we have some new catch basins and they're going to be brought out to a new storm sewer on Candlewood Lane. And it will go down Candlewood Lane to this area here and then switching to the other drawing. Oh, I'm sorry. Just so you're aware, the bold, uh, the bold dash line is is uh, there in, on Candlewood Lane. That's the new pipe that um, you can see. Yep. And then some sorry. of it is some of it is new piping and some of it is replacing piping. So we're going to come down to what they we labeled here as storm manhole number two. And then that's all new piping up towards the other end of Candlewood, but down through the parking lot and out to University Avenue is just going to be the upgrade of the existing pipe. Because if we tied that storm sewer into it right now, uh, it's undersized. So basically we're collecting more storm sewer, putting it down through that existing pipe, just can't handle that size. So, so the there is already a pipe there. Yeah. We're just going to be upsizing the pipe in the same location. Yeah. Okay, so that, storm that's underneath, sorry, just don't sure. mean to you, but I'll just ask because somebody may not understand. Um, that's what's going across the parking lot there. That's, that's right. There's right. an We're existing pipe existing there. Pipe now, right? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, and, and it goes right out to University Avenue. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, right now it's a it's a 200 diameter concrete. So our uh, the new pipe will be a 250, and then it goes even higher, further down. It goes to a 300 as we accumulate more storm flows. Because as you can see down around like uh, catch basin number two, there's a drain there that catch, catches a couple of catch basins. So we're going to yeah. pick that up. So as we accumulate more flow, we have to get bigger diameter pipe. One of the things I wanted to point out was up here, which would you be going west west of storm manhole number two. There's an existing storm sewer you guys have there. Right. Uh, as part of the job, uh, Kendall Mason, the deputy commissioner for the city said like, you know, if we're gonna put this storm sewer in and it's gonna be the city's responsibility, they wanna tie that storm in. And that's why they've requested easements across there. We're not putting new pipe in there at all, but it's just that if we ever have to go back and dig it up because there's a break, the city wants the legal right to be able to do that. Oh, okay, so that's just um, that's in front of your place, I think, Gina. There. Yeah, that I'm just trying to get rid of this. There's a little bar be, right where that is, where you know you put up your hand and stuff. It's part of the Zoom thing, yeah. and I can't seem to make it go away. So, but I see where it is. There's a car park there. Yeah, that's yeah. like my place, and it goes along. Are and you're not doing anything in those parking lots either, are you? Or no, we're not. We're, no. Okay. But, but uh, Brian and. Uh, um, Curtis are going to be looking for easements there so that so you know 10 years down the road that storm sewer is collapsed and the city wants to do a repair on it they want the legal right to do that right. so just to just to interject um the city um can you go back to that other plan uh Kent the first plan you had and we sure talk touch base I guess a little bit and can you move it over to the right some so I can see those catch basins yep so basically we were saying that you can see, and maybe you can point to them with your cursor, Kent, the three catch basin leads there go, coming from a catch basin onto yeah. the road. Like there's that yeah. one there that. One here, one down here. And those are those backyard drains. This yeah. is an existing catch basin. 
and this is an existing catch basin. The problem so basic, with them, basically, right we, there. I guess what we had discussed, um, and I think, and Gina, we discussed this with you, the city is, is planning to put in um, those, we call them catch basin leads, the pipes that are coming from the catch basins into the manhole in the street. Mm -hmm. And those catch basin leads we will install for for uh, the for the association. But after they're installed, we were we were going to say that the association they were your pipes, and the city basically we were going to take responsibility for the mainline pipe uh, going down the street. And maybe Ken, can you kind of yeah, go so to the left all, again? So that main yep. pipe. Just, just for the people who are from Candlewood Lane who are listening and and uh, watching this, all of this part here is all common land. Okay, none of it's your private property. So, uh, you know, this yep. will be discussed by the board and maybe brought to a vote, but it might not be necessary uh, to um, grant easements on what is common land. As we proceed, there's going to be some places further along, which is why these real estate fellows are here, where they're going to be going across, not necessarily your backyards or anything, but your some people's parking spots. And Maybe you should flip to another plan then, Kent. Yep. And that's so basic, going to be on this easements. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I'll just admit this person just one second. I'll just sure. bring her up to speed quickly. Hi, Anne. Anna, can you hear me? Sorry, I was muted. It's Anne. Oh, hi, Anne. No, I just uh, I just wanted to. Um, we're just in the discussion here, and just to uh, bring you up to speed. There, we'll maybe finish this discussion. Then, if you have any other questions, we can go back and answer that. Um, I'm with the city. I'm Susan Stephen, and then we also have Kent Taze and David Morgan here from CBCL. Uh, they're the consultant designing the project, and we also have Curtis Langell and uh, Brian Irving here on the line from uh, the city uh, real estate group. So actually um, where we were now, we were just discussing uh, the new pipe that we're putting in. Um, and I don't know, I guess we were back to the point here in this on the drawing that's showing on your screen now, uh, the dashed bold line and Kent, maybe you can pull down yep. to the dashed bold line is the new pipe we're putting in. Um, that's actually there's actually an existing pipe there, and we're looking to upsize that pipe. So in the same trench, just make the pipe bigger. And what I was going to say too, um, that cross hatched area, the dark area, that's just kind of shaded. That those are the spots that we were looking to get easements. Um, so yeah, and those the easements... those those parking spots that are underneath uh, the the hatched area there, the shaded area. That's what uh, Kent was referring to and Gina there, but where we were going to be looking for easements. Yeah. So there's seven that are owned. Right. And the, the very first two, the blue car and the white car, are um, owned by, by the association. The association. So I, you know, and none of those people, I believe, are on this call right now, but we'll yeah. have to come up with ways with, you know, that you'll be able to inform them and so on. Yes. Because their parking spots will be dug up. I'll have questions afterwards, but maybe I'll just keep them all till the end. Yeah. And, and then I'll ask the questions that everybody's going to ask because I've already asked them. And, yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah, there's, and there's also, a, oh, go ahead, oh, Susan. No, I was just going to say, so that bottom left of the screen, it also shows another shaded area. But there's no bold lines there. So that's like Ken had mentioned. There is a pipe there now that's part of the trunk sewer that the, the city will take ownership of because it's part of the main trunk storm line. And uh, but we won't be doing any construction there right now. There's already a pipe there. So we were going to approach the owners of those parking spots on the bottom left as well, just to kind of tidy things up basically we should have easements there like ken said if, if something ever happens to that pipe in the future and we want to go in there and work it's good if we had easements there but this or next summer when we do this actual project is the plan um we won't be doing any construction there so you might be approached if you own any of those parking spots but we won't actually be doing construction there next summer and and i don't know if you want so basically the pipe we're looking to install is uh, just on this page there, that 
bold line kind of going towards the top of the page, upsizing that pipe. And then also uh, to the bottom, the bottom right there on the sheet and over to this other one where that's new pipe that we're going to be installing on Candlewood Lane. Anything that's in bold, uh, the bold line, that's going to be all new pipe. And we're going to pick up, there's some catch basins there that are currently tied into the sanitary sewer. And we want to take uh, stormwater out of the sanitary sewer. That's basically what our goal is here to prevent uh, any surcharging in the sanitary sewer and just basically just get the stormwater out of the sanitary. So, so I don't know, Kent, if you. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty well the, the job in a nutshell. I mean, the uh, we have uh, we have completed the report to the city and uh, as ma most people that live in Candlewood area know we were over there with a drill wig and we drilled and one of the issues is going to be in the area that folks are going to have to put up with is there's a lot of rock uh, it's Milledgeville conglomerate rock and we won't candy coat it it is a tough job because you it's hard to break uh, there we will put in our specifications there'll be no blasting but it will all be done with hydraulic hammer uh, it's just a proximity to homes. It's the cost effectiveness of uh, drilling and blasting is not there because you have to do pre bass surveys and insurance and everything else. So all the rock will be broken out with rock. The main part of the rock is uh, down in this area here. When you drive through here, through there, you'll see there's a rock face right there. And I think we were drilled down uh, 16 inches and we're hitting solid rock. So that rock. Will Where is that, be... Kent? I can't, I guess I can't uh, see it. It's right there by Storm Manhole 3. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There is a big rock face there. Face there, yeah. 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 So we, try, we do try and avoid blasting. Um, so, like Kent said, it'll be the rock hammer. That will just be an issue when there's a new trench, like that pipe that we're putting in on Candlewood Lane. There's no pipe there now, so that will all be new trench. That the pipe that's going where we're going up in between the units, up towards um, uh, University Avenue, that's all an existing trench. So we're just basically taking a pipe out that's there and putting a new one in. So that shouldn't be an issue there. It'll just be an issue when we're putting in the new pipe in on the actual street. Yeah. Also, you may have obviously, to have a little bit in the, the bottom of the trenches because the standard nowadays is you know you have a six inches of bedding plus we've upsized the pipe so sometimes you've got a little bit deeper excavation but uh, you're talking a foot or two at the most yeah is it all rock there too do you know no we did well we didn't drill there because it's existing so trench, right? dig the hole right <laughs> well that well you, you mean it, it the pipe was put in at one time so we make the assumption there's no rock so we just dr we just drilled across the part we didn't drill on any of the property we stayed within the asphalt just to, it gives you you know you're never perfect of where the rock is but it gives you a good representation and what we're doing that for is uh, mainly for just for our cost estimating so that we have a better handle on what it's going to cost to remove the rock. That's the biggest reason we do the rock right. ropes. Right. And we also are looking for one of the things we always do is we look for any contaminated soils when we drill because they, they basically do a sniff test to make sure there's no hydrocarbons or anything. That, because, I mean, in an older city like St. John and even some of the newer cities, it's surprising the amount of contaminated soils. And, you know, we can deal with contaminated soils, but we need to know up front so that, you know, we can budget that cost into any of the projects. We did not in this area find any contaminated soils, by the way, so. Oh, that's good to know. Yep. And also, just as a side note, you'll know, obviously, when we're digging in Candlewood Lane, um, we're going to have to have some two-way traffic or we're going to have to deal with some traffic issues there so people can get in from either end, depending on where they live. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it'll be well signed and everything. And like you say, prior to construction, we always give out notices again and we do give out notices, but just to be aware that we we'll, there will be disruption, obviously. Major disruption. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fortunately, um, <clears throat> most of the areas, there are parking, there's still going to be access to parking for most of the people. The yep. exceptions will be that little parking lot there when you're digging where the rock face is across from it. Right. And I mean, and some of the, some days, Gina, it may be, you know, there may be a day where we'll need to somebody park down the street just because access to their parking stall. Like I know where Jeff Rogers parking stall is. There yeah, may be a day or two when we're going through there breaking rock. He may not be able to get access to no. it. I, 
Yeah, and we do have extra parking. This is something we'll be able to address more at the time, but there are a lot of extra parking spots at the entrance to Candlewood Lane and the exit from Candlewood yes, Lane yep. where, where there's not going to be any uh, work being done. And so, you know, we can reassign those spots uh, for that duration and people could go park there, right. which will probably be preferable to parking on the street when it's already going to be two-way. Yes. Right? It's you're going to have two-way traffic. Way you know, in, in some areas where it's hard enough getting well, yes. where cars park on the side of the road, you can only get one car through. So, you know, it's probably better to reassign the parking. And if it's really becomes a problem, which I doubt it will, but if it does, uh, we might be asking for some permission for people to park on in the Gorman Arena parking lot. But I can't see that that'll be, I don't think there's enough cars for that to be an issue no. because we do it, have it, enough it, extra spots. Like the construction too, it's not just the excavator, it's trucks. Trucks are the biggest thing because they're constantly taking material away and bringing new materials in because City of St. John specifications require all new trenches to have all new gravels in them. So you take everything out. Yeah, well, it gives you a better road <laughs> in yeah. the end. So everything's new, right? That's right from the bedding pipe, initial backfill, pit run gravel, crushed gravel, and asphalt. So everything's kind of, you know, you you tear it all out and you rebuild it back from scratch. So yeah, nice. So. That's that's a good thing for us because that <laughs> road could definitely, especially that section of that road. Yeah, <laughs> would they keep? Use some work. It's too bad you're not going beyond that parking lot a little bit more west. <laughs> it's a really bad spot, it's just a little further west. Now, you know, if you can accidentally dig those up and fix them, we'd really appreciate that. Because yeah. bad. <laughs> we try not to accidentally do anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, I should just touch on as well. Um, so we do, uh, we will be reinstating um, what we damage, obviously, like uh, curb, sidewalk, the sod, asphalt. I, I do know there's a few trees in there um, that probably aren't going to make it. We can in, we can replant uh, like smaller. That obviously they can't be the size they are now, but we can put other trees back in their place. Smaller ones. Usually they're only about a couple inches in diameter is what we usually transplant just so they survive. But um, just I so. Uh, yeah, that's on the common ground, and we'll we can discuss that just as a matter of. It's over by at the, where you go around the corner mostly. I think is where, outside of 90 is where you're talking about. Well, and I'm thinking right up where. Right here, this, there's trees. Oh, down yeah, there's a couple there. of trees there. Yeah. 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 They're all on common ground. So, you know, we, we can discuss that. The ones that are on the corner, that whole corner area, as you probably noticed when you were doing your investigate investigative work, that catch basin there is very sunken. Yes. And, yes. and uh, oh. the trees are not doing well anyway so it won't yeah. be any great loss to lose those uh but we're hoping that possibly i mean i know that the townhouses are lower than the grade of the road there but if there's a possibility of you know making that so that it's a little less sunken which would probably be a good thing for everybody but you know i'm sure when you guys do it they'll do it so that it works basically yeah. you want the catch basin to work so um so what we also do require um CBCL will have an inspector uh, out on site and, and so there will always be someone around, a representative of the city, plus everyone, you have my phone number. Um, and uh, so if there's anything that comes up that you want to discuss, that you're concerned you, um, definitely reach out. And like I say, there will be always someone on site with the contractor. Um, just kind of keeping an eye on things and keeping us updated on what's going on. So. I have a question. It's just a, maybe it's a question for after the meeting, though. Uh, but I do have some questions from discussions I've had uh, about some of the things you're doing, which have to do with with what you're actually going to be doing, particularly when you're going to be using rock hammers and hydraulic hammers to uh, remove the rock. They're relatively large, and I just want to call your attention to the fact that all the foundations in all those buildings are concrete block and mortar. So um, I don't know whether some of the owners of the properties would want or whether we should ask just as an organization to have some kind of a pre-work inspection of foundations because it's quite possible because we have had rock breaking in the past in areas like the, um, 
oh, what do they call it? Rocky Terrace uh, apartment building, and when they were building the John Two, where there was some additional cracking of um, foundations afterwards, and what's not rock there is was bog. And so, oh, okay. <laughs> so we get so a lot of people have had water in their basements, and I think if the and people are concerned about one thing or two things, that would be one of them. The other is more of a of a property maintenance limited concern, and that's the water lines that run in front of all the townhouses, which I've told you guys about ad nauseum. But they are made out of very old, very thin walled copper pipe and with all the joints just soldered together. And any kind of work that's done, for example, we just had a water lake at break at 60, which is if you go the other way where you're planning to bring the catch basin up to University Avenue there, uh, if you go through that parking lot, it's the very first one right next to University Avenue. Right yeah, we saw them there today, actually. Yeah, yep. bring it down to speak you see. We have a water break there. Mm -hmm probably because of all the work that they're doing in the area, which, you know, which disrupts piping and so on and so forth. Now we're paying probably by the end of it all close to $10,000 to fix that water line. Just that one little break right there. Mm -hmm. So that's a concern to us. It's a major concern whether, you know, this kind of work when you're breaking rock, whether it's going to have any effects on our water lines. The ones in front of the, where you're going along University Avenue, the ones, if you're going down University Avenue the right way, if you're driving the right way, all the ones on the right have been replaced. But that was probably over 20 years ago. Um, the ones on the left have not been replaced. They're the original old copper pipe. And unfortunately, our association is only able to replace them as they break, except for in two instances. One is that row that's done, and the other one is the row behind the 107 to 121 row, we did them probably over 10 years ago. But the rest of them are all the old pipes in there. So, so there is some concern. So what's happened is that, for example, 60's pipe, 60 to 62 has been replaced to, um, I don't think 66 has, but 68 and 70, that piece has been replaced. So I mean, I can go through them all with you, but it doesn't really matter what's been replaced. The point is that that's going to be a concern to us, and I'm just wondering what, if anything, uh, you'd be able to do about it. There well, is just... another thing as well. The uh, those water pipes, the breaks usually. I don't know about the one tonight at 60, but I know it was the case in my own many years ago. But the breaks usually occur where the uh, pipe leaves the uh, main. Uh, feed and goes into the house. It's sort of T-junction there, and yeah. that has proven to be very weak just about everywhere on the development. So um, that, that's something that you should at least know about. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are aware that it's our problem because it's on our property, and we've talked a lot about this. I see a trench going all the way to, to Candlewood Lane and all the way up Candlewood Lane to the end of those two rows. And I'm saying, so why you've got the trench, Doug? Why don't you put a water <laughs> line in there? So at least those people will have proper service like most other people in St. John have, which is going down and going into each one of their units. And we'd be happy for you to dig up all the lawns and we'd repair all that for you if you put proper water line in there. But you know I've said that many times before. And, <laughs> and I'm sure I'm probably smoking dope when I think that you <laughs> might do that for me. But that that would be the ideal. But but the, the worst case scenario is that we're going to have a lot of water line breaks along there because of the rock breaking. And what are we going to have for help if that happens? Because you'll bankrupt us. We do not have the funds to replace all those water lines. So you're concerned where we're going down Candlewood Lane or up in between these units? Or well, you know, we don't know if there's rock up between these units. So let's just talk about where we know there's rock right yeah. now, which is a lot up, up Candlewood Lane. So there's eight homes on the left hand side of Candlewood Lane. 
I'm not sure any of them have had their water lines repaired there. Yes, one. 86 has. So, um, and, and the water line in that parking lot where Jeff parks, that's been done. The join there where it joins the one going down uh, to the other row that got at 60 ends, that's been done. But so anyway, there's all those there. And I'm just wondering, you know, if we end up with a bunch of water line breaks there and end up having to replace that whole row, that's a $50,000 bill at the very least. Because the last time we did it over 10 years ago, it was 35000 and that didn't include the landscaping and replacing all the sidewalks because it was done in people's backyards where we negotiated with them just to do a little bit of their lawns and they did the rest. So I, I'm just wondering whether that's, and, and you know, maybe you could give us some advice on how we proceed with that, who we talk to, you know, and, and how we get that uh, so that we might get some assurances or some, some something, some, acknowledgement that we might need help afterwards if that happens or do we have to go a legal route with it like mm -hmm. what do we do do we talk to our insurance company and ask them do do you guys uh, for example i'm now dealing with the other situation i was telling you about in my condo building and the contractor there mm -hmm. added our building to their insurance so that if anything's damaged when they're doing that job <clears throat> our, our damage is covered and we'll be covered by the insurance. So I don't know if that's something with your contractors, you can you can negotiate with them that, you know, if there's any damage to any of our infrastructure that we're in charge of, that they would have to repair it. I don't know, but the, to me- The difference between that, Gina, and what we're doing here is yeah. you, have a, you have a relatively brand new condo building and you're taking an old building out. Yeah. We're putting new stuff okay. in next to old okay. stuff it's complete opposite so it's a yes. it, it would be very very difficult for the city to put that onus on a contractor because i mean a contractor is just like they, the rest yeah. of us how could they even like you know how could you ensure that to you know it's how could they know yeah i i understand you but so so we just <laughs> own, we get this done and then and we really can't stop you from doing the, the street because the street is your you know <laughs> that this you you guys service the street not us right mm -hmm. so you know yep. you take that all the way over there we could say okay we're not going to give you that little e easement into that little catch base in there but you probably have the right to go on there anyway right <laughs> and then That's, you know so we can Gina, if i'm if i may um uh, my name is curtis langel and I, i'm i'm the manager of real estate for the city <clears throat> excuse me and part of my role in this process would be to go and meet with all the property owners where we wish to acquire a land interest in. In this case, it's an easement. And I, I guess I just want to first of all start off with the fact that we're not looking to buy land. OK, no. and I just want to explain that to the folks that may be listening online. What we're looking for is a legal right to go on to their property to go and do the necessary work for the municipal infrastructure that we need in the ground there. Now, the pipe that's going up in between the two condo building units towards Candlewood Lane, I'm oh, sorry, towards University Avenue, we may or may not have the legal right to go in and do maintenance to those pipes now. We haven't really investigated that. There's something called prescriptive rights that based on a certain age of the pipe that was in the ground, that the city would have the legal right to go in and maintain and, and do what's necessary to keep those pipes working. But we always prefer to have easements in place, which is a partial land interest, which would grant the city or its agents the right to go on to the private owner's lands or the associations in your case, to, to do the necessary work to make sure that uh, if there is a break in the line, or in this case, putting a new pipe in the ground where there was or there is one then then we have that legal right to do so it gets a little messier when we talk about prescriptive rights and so on that being said when i approach any property owner <clears throat> we're, there's going to be a number of things that we're going to be uh, 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 on board with one is paying the legal fees 
uh, because it is a land transaction. An easement is still a land transaction with individual property owners. The city will go and pay the legal fees for the property owner's lawyer to review our documentation and to advise their client. Okay. Second, um, as as um, Kent and and Susan may have mentioned, I, I'm sure one of them have said it already. We will reinstate to the same or better, whether it's grass, landscaping, concrete, curbing, asphalt. So that will all be taken care of as well. Um, and with respect to those parking spots down, I'm going to say on the lower end where construction is not anticipated. Again, there's a there's a there's a trunk sewer, Susan. I believe you said there was yep. that um, that even though we're not doing any work on or proposed to do any work on, uh, we'd like to have formal easements in place. And since we're in the area, why not negotiate and get those? Yeah. So I under, the other the other point, I guess, and that's why I jumped. I want to jump online right now, Gina, was <sighs> listening to what you're saying about and, and Kent as well about the Milledgeville conglomerate. I mean, I've talked to a number of contractors and it's messy stuff. It's almost like a sponge, Kent, as yeah. I understand <laughs> it. You go and pound on it and it, and it just bounces off. Makes it, dust. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> there's a number of contractors that have built in well off University Avenue, Clovelly, Steve Britton. Uh yeah. he he is well aware of conglomerate up in that area. No, um into Noel, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um Rock. So I think we gotta ha we have to have further discussions on on the 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 contractor, whoever that's going to be before they go in, whether we do a, a pre survey of people's foundations on the inside. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of talking at a school here. I haven't talked to Susan or Kent about this, but if there are serious legitimate concerns, and especially you mentioned when Jean Coutu was being developed, which is not next door. I mean, it, it's not the backyards of these homes. It's next door. There's a little bit of a distance there. If that development caused heartache and hardship to some of your owners there, I feel like we need to go in and make some some uh, survey assurances to protect not only the, the individual property owners' rights, but the cities. We need to know whether or not we're going to be held liable for events that have already taken place compared to events that may or may not take place. So those are the discussions we haven't had, um, we're going to have, especially in light of this conversation that you bring to light. Um, and that's the per that's one of the reasons why we have this this meeting online is to, is to hear uh, the concerns of the neighbors and the association. Great. Yeah, I, I was asked I was asked to raise some of those, and uh, you know, uh, like I say, they are concerns for us. Uh, the one, the foundation one is certainly every individual homeowner's concern there. And the waterline one is, well, it's every individual owner's, owner's concern if we have to go back to them with a special assessment to get the line replaced. So, you know, which, however we have to do this, it's, it's, you know, these are our concerns and we're hoping that you can take them under consideration. Um, I don't think they're concerns that will necessarily kiboshed this thing because I don't think it should be kiboshed and you know I'm a great proponent of it I think you know you're doing the right thing from an environmental point of view and and uh, you know you're improving our infrastructure and we need that very much so any improvements better than no improvement I'll tell you uh, and like Curtis so said lines. <laughs> you know we can have discussions on doing the pre-construction survey by Jade and technical consultant uh, to you know, do an assessment and make sure that you know, like he says, protect both the homeowner and the city. But the infrastructure buried the water lines. I mean, a lot of the, you, as you know, Gina, a lot of it's three quarter inch water line down six feet. There's really no way to, you know, get a handle. You may we may fly through there and never see a water leak, right? It's just nobody would know. That's the biggest unknown, right? So. Yeah. Now, when they did the John Coutu, did they have any issues with the water lines, or was it just mainly foundation stuff? If I recall correctly, we actually had a water line break. 
And that was what the funny part was, is the water lines in that row go along the back. But we had a water line break and everybody didn't have water and it was an emergency. And so somebody having to do with the property development actually came around and delivered jugs of water to everybody because we had no water. Mm. Um, I'd have to look back through my notes to exactly remember what happened. I know that it was at number six. And I, I, but I just, I'm not quite clear. I would have to ask somebody about that to, to remember accurately. That might um, have just been a supply issue then, not necessarily a break on your, on your property. Maybe something happened up the road or something. Uh, no, I, we actually, there was a, there was an issue that, that caused us grief. I know that guy number six claimed, uh, really regret it, but he claimed that he had some extra cracks. And are you yeah. still on? I'm, I'm on, yes. Okay. You're at four, right? Yeah, I'm at four. I have a few questions, but I'll hold off on them. Okay, did any of them have to do with what we're talking about right now and problems when John Gatou was put in? It wasn't when John Gatou was put in, but when they put in the gas line, it ended up costing me about $5,000 because of cracks in the basement and water getting in, and as well as my next-door neighbor at the time, who was not the person you're talking about, I don't think, Gina... No, the one before. It was one before. And both of us ended up um, having to pay, you know, uh, put in sump pumps and pay, you know, wise crack, cracks or whatever that's called. Like, like it cost each of us almost $5,000 because of the jackhammering from putting in the gas lines. So that was, you know, I just wanted to mention that as well, that there definitely was damage um, from, from that, from that. Yeah you know, um, event, so. Were the gas lines on University Avenue? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, it goes right along where the sidewalk is now, the brand new sidewalk. They actually drilled holes all the way along University Avenue, like every 10 or 12 feet. When they were, before they started to make the the um, the new sidewalks, before they built all that in there just now, they, they drilled big foot, one foot diameter holes about, four or five inches deep to excavate to see where the, the um, gas hydro line was. Yeah, hydro excavated the holes? Yeah, hydro. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a standard procedure for yeah. when we cross so gas we didn't. Uh, there's a whole story there, which I won't get into now, but I will tell you sometime, Kent, because it's pretty interesting. But anyway, so we know, they know exactly where they are now because that's where, and they were just along, you know, for example, where that green bit is between our parking and University Avenue? Yes, that's where the that's where the gas line is because they yeah. were they were hills, the holes drilled all the way like those big hydrovac um, excavations all the way through there and all the way and along closer at where Anne is she's on at four it was in her the lawn next to her home there and along there that's how close it was so it's about the same distance maybe a little bit closer and they were jackhammering there and that's I wasn't living here then so I didn't know about that but. That I do now. Yeah. Well, four, so. four and six, my my place and my next door neighbor at the time, and they did not do a pre-assessment, and we had no recourse after it. You know, definitely um, was the cause of that, and we had no recourse. There was no pre-assessment done, so I would advise pre-assessment. <laughs> yeah. And just as a follow-up, some of the people in University Avenue Row have had water issues in their basements. Um, nobody's ever, this is the first I heard about the um, jackhammering for the gas line. So nobody said anything about to me about those because it was before. We have had water line breaks there, but they weren't related to any jackhammering that we know of. Um, but, Although but yeah. both of our houses, Gina, both had the water line problems. Yeah. You know. Um, so, so myself and number six both had uh, had to have our backyards dug up and the water lines fixed. So, yeah, yeah. So your foundation, you had issues with with your foundation and your water line. The water line didn't come until several years later, but you know, it sort of makes you wonder if it added to it. You know, kind of contributed to uh, the weakness of the water line as well. But the but the basement flooding was immediate, both like in mine. I was closer, and in the one next to me, number six. Um, and we we had to we had to um, have it fixed and install some pumps at exactly the same time. We actually worked together and hired the same company to come and do it. And so 
it was, uh, yeah, it was not fun and it was very expensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, you know, I don't want to go through that. So I don't know if, if, but my under looking at the picture, Gina, I, and you know this better than I do. I like my this row, the, the bottom part of that row is not going to be affected, correct? No, nothing over in your area is going to be affected at all. It all starts, any work starts at the next row that runs the same way as your row, perpendicular to Candlewood Lane going to University Avenue. And in that parking lot there, you see where that gray bar is? Yeah, yeah. Go, they're going to go, there's already a line there, and they're just going to, they're going to dig down there and put in a bigger um sewer line for lack of another term storm sewer storm sewer line uh they're gonna put another storm sewer line through there there's already one but it's not big enough so they're putting a bigger one in there so so nothing on on your end or even the end where i live really because it's, all they're doing is asking for an easement there but they're not actually doing any work where i was but um but yeah so it's, it's everything kind of uh to the east end of the of our complex everything from 60 over so all the numbers like 60 to 76 or to 74 and then 76 to 121 they're all the ones that are being uh impacted but you won't be at all uh, and the and the actual jackhammering from what we know right now and is only going to be in the candlewood lane in the road uh between you know where those two the two rows face yeah. each other just that part of the lane is going to be dug up and it's going to be a mess. But um, so you won't be coming down there anyway. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't travel that no. road very often. But I do have another question and it probably, it may not have anything at all to do with this project, but beside my house, between my house and University Avenue, the um, there's um, pipe that, that runs there that's all broken and crumbled because the earth has eroded to the point since I've been here about 20 years, it's gone down, I'd say at least a foot. It's always mushy and damp. And the pipes that are against my house going out to the new sidewalk are all broken. If you walk over them, Gina, you can see them. You're actually walking over the pipes and they're all cracked and broken and everything. And I just noticed that like, I can't keep my fence straight there. I've paid a lot of money every year to get that straightened because the earth is just, it's just mud and it's just falling down. And I wonder if it's so full of water because there's about, about three different um, uh, sewage, what do you call like the round circle things, uh, the manholes, manhole, thank you, manholes, manholes there. And, wow. um, and again, these pipes that are all cracked and broken um, going out into the street. So I, I just, I just need to ask that question if fixing that is part of this or, I know now that I know it's not close to what's where the work's being done. I wish that it would get fixed, though. Like it's. Um, um, is it's it almost, in the street right away, or is it? No. It's not on my property. It's on the property. It's on the. Well, I think it's property maintenance property, isn't it, Gina? Yeah. So yeah. it's right up. You see where four is, Susan, and you see yeah. you've got a white dot. Um, and there's a line going down to another white dot, and so on. I'm assuming that that's another water or sewage line that isn't having any that's work. That's sanitary line. Ken, can you zoom in on that? Yeah, I think that's a storm line, Susan. Okay. And, and just yeah. to be politically correct, we should really change the name from manholes to person holes, shouldn't we? I'm just saying. Yes, you know. yes, yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, such a holes or something. Anyway, yeah, yeah so what? she's it's... talking about that. Um, that I would assume that's it's not the here. water line, right? That's a that's a storm water line. Well, it says it's sanitary below there, Kent, on the actual line itself. It says sanitary, but then it ties into the storm, does it? What, like, if you go down right there, that word says yeah. Is, it, is that yeah, wrong? It's a catch base there. I'm not sure. I. If somebody can come and like have... look at it, I worry that it's going to like just cause damage to the side of the house, right? And and not to mention the fact that it's just mush every time that you walk on it and the, the manhole covers are a little further down like closer like around my backyard but the broken pipes are going right against the side of my house it, it doesn't look like where that line runs on the picture right now it's a little farther up like at the side of the house you can see mm -hmm. these broken pipes that are just it's because the 
I assume that they were a foot deep buried underground, you know, originally, and mm. the, the, the ground is just eroded so bad. Are they you white? Can, they're black. Okay. I will come and have a look. I, I don't know. They might have been old. Um, back in the day, they would put old uh, drain tile pipe from your um, uh, eaves trough. Meters. Roof meters, yeah. Yeah. And they would put that out and, you know, people have stopped doing that because they just don't last and they end up doing what these are probably what they are and what they're doing, which is breaking as the soil erodes and so on. So people now just, for the most part, have big, long, which you've done, you know, have long things that go out from the, the outspout from their eaves troughing, you know, to, to direct the water out away from the, from the, um, from the side of the house. Uh, we'll look at it, but this is completely outside of this. But I just will mention that the pro one of the problems here is that some places the, the the basement is below grade so that, for example, the a lot of the homes on the first part of Candlewood Lane, the 40 to 56 row, that it actually d goes down from the road to the front door. And there's nothing we can do about filling that in, unfortunately, because you can't go above I don't really know the technical names for construction things, but you can't go above where the concrete meets your wall, whatever that's called, construction guys, right? Because if you go above that, there's some reason why you can't do it in construction world where you can't go above that. So in other words, that's our, our responsibility, except for possibly if there's some issue with those lines that is in the same category as what we're talking about. But other than that, that's our that's property maintenance's responsibility because those are all on property maintenance property. So we'll have to have somebody come to look and Susan, if I can just just point out, I mean, I'm I'm sure we should be able to find uh, some folks that can go out and take a look at that exposure or that pipe. Um, sounds to me like it could be a an issue that. You know, while we're out there looking, there's no reason why I wouldn't think that we can go out and figure out what's going on there, whether or not it's just erosion of, of topsoil over top or or whatever the case may be. Is is that a possibility? Um, the only thing oh, the only thing is like that the sanitary and the water in this Candlewood Lane is is a, is a responsibility of the property maintenance group. But that's the only thing. Like so we it were, is on private land, is it? Yeah, it's it's not in the street right away where she was talking okay. about that. The owners own each one of those units, and then around those units, there's property, and that's owned by the association. Yes. And so, then we yeah, yeah we own the street and the stormwater. Um, that's yeah. the only thing. That's why I was asking kind of where it was exactly if it was on university like up there or if it was down <clears throat> excuse me more towards the property. Yeah. Whether whether we we have control over that or not, um, I mean we're here to try to get um, uh, folks to buy into this project, and mm -hmm. it certainly wouldn't hurt if we had the technical experience in our municipal ops to go out and take a quick look. It certainly would help the homeowners in that area and make them feel a little bit better about the project. Mm -hmm. I, I would really appreciate that because just to have, I mean, even if it is property maintenance responsibility, I'd like to know what it is. And yeah. if, it, if it's ruining my basement, uh, you know, if, 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 I'm, if it's going to cause, you know, just continue to cause problems in the future. So I would, I would really appreciate if someone would just advise, even if, even if you're not responsible for the fixing of it. So is it, is it specifically... Is it, oh, sorry. So is it where that kind of that L shape comes off the manhole there? Or you're saying it's not even the way it looks on this plan. What looks out by your house is different. It's right beside your house or beside? Yeah, if, if, if you walk, you see where, you know, if you walk along the side of my house, okay. um, as everybody who lives in University Avenue does, because <laughs> they, oh. they park over the other side, like they're walking, they're literally walking on top of this broken, cracked pipe. And um, so it, it's it's more the side of my house okay. rather than down by where the fence is. But but the whole but but the fence is has more like um, moisture, like clay, like it, it's never like dry 
dry there. No matter how, you know, in the middle of July, it's not dry. It's all yeah. be waterlogged, and the fence is constantly in need of repair, and the deck is actually sinking at the far corner. So yeah, yeah. Okay. It's an awkward thing because we do own the property around Anne's place, right? But as your drawings show there with the little black lines, each of the owners owns their backyard. So, you know, so, you know, we have a similar problem behind 75 and 77 where they're getting flooding in their backyard. But if you just scroll up just a bit on that image, just so I can have a look more than anything else. Um, uh, yeah, so go a little bit further up, please, Ken. <laughs> up, not no, no, not up the street, up the picture. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can see why you thought I meant up the street. Um, yeah, right there. So d this is a d different issue, but I will say that if if there is an offer for some city expertise, that we would gratefully appreciate it. And we'd want to ask them about that whole area in there where Anne's talking about, and also behind 75 and 77, where water gathers in the backyards of 75 and 77. It's, we, we have no responsibility, property maintenance, because as you can see, the property lines butt against each other. And we've been asked to help, but we have no, legal responsibility to do anything about it but if we could offer these folks some advice on on what may help mitigate it because they're in a similar situation where uh, they're low and they can't raise the grade of the backyard any they can't put any fill in there because it'll raise the yard above you know whatever you call that place where the foundation meets the rest of the house and you can't do that apparently so anyway, it's a completely is different there, issue it, off topic from this, but it is something that we would gratefully, uh, you know, appreciate any any advice about. And one of the things too is, you know, the question was asked when we were looking at that problem and the one next to Anne's is exactly the same is, do we need a better system of catch basin infrastructure? And if we did, in those backyards there and in that side yard where Anne's talking about the gathering of the water, then we would have to tie it into the city's infrastructure. And what would that involve? I think it already is there a is. pipe all along the back of the, where those two properties abut? Like does that 150 PVC pipe carry on all the way? I think it was uh, clogged, right? So we only could go video so far. So, but I, I believe you already have a backyard drain system between those buildings, Gina. What happened was way back, that way, way back, okay, I know in the annals of history because the guy that owned 56 told me this, they built, they dug a trench, and maybe David would be able to remember this too. They dug a trench along the property lines between the two buildings there, the two where the backyards butt against each other to try to mitigate that water gathering. And of course, yeah, it's I think it's. I think it's there. If yeah. you look here, that 150 PVC, I think that's it. But okay. there's also a drain in here behind all these buildings too. Sorry, where? Right in behind uh, 56 to 40. There's a storm drain in there too. Where is it? Right here. I don't. It's, see we can't see your cursor, Kent, when you do that. Okay. It's uh, you see you, Civic number 40. Yep. Just above it, right on its right above the building. There's a storm line there too. There, okay. you guys have you guys have drop backyard and drain lines going everywhere. And yeah. I mean, it's it's just I think over the years, people, every time they had a problem, they ran another drain line. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's quite it, possible. I mean, it, it is. And, and a lot of them over time, I mean, they're small. They weren't probably properly constructed and they've collapsed, filled up with gravel and dirt and mud and everything else. Right. So yeah. that's yeah. when, yeah, when she used... mentioned that that drain line. I mean, yeah, you, there's a good chance a lot of those used to be in the older buildings if everybody ran the roof leaders down into the storm sewer system too or into their drain tile and a lot of them have been abandoned and removed over time eh? so yeah so so yes and i think you're right and as you can see you know in a property uh, curtis would be able to comment on this we don't own any property back there yeah. property maintenance but somebody one. has gone in and put a, a drain in back there and whether yeah. whether it was the associate did that way sure. right 
And if they want to cooperatively do that again, that would be great. But unfortunately, from a property maintenance point of view, we don't have any responsibility to mitigate anything in people's backyards. Yeah. If you go to the right there, Kent, on that plan, um, if you pull over to the right, so that 150 PVC pipe, did you say you that was video? Video, but we could only go so far, I believe. So see that little short section of pipe there, uh, that yeah. 150 PVC that goes to the left? Yeah. That's as far as they could go with a video camera before it was full. So yeah. if that pipe carries on all the way over to 75 and or 76, the ones you're talking about, I mean, it, it could carry that whole way across the back of that property, but... And That's as far as video probably, camera could get without hitting a wall of dirt. Yeah, and it probably was what drain tile, like like six inch or whatever it is, drain tile um, piping. That yeah, you're right. It probably just filled up. Excuse me. Anyway, so uh, just a question. Uh, so what can be done to to clean out those pipes, uh, hmm. Kent or, or Susan, or do you d need to dig it up and replace them? Well, I don't know. I mean, sometimes we can flush lines and use a hydro truck. I guess even maybe Kent can comment more or Dave. I don't know. Uh, I don't even. I don't know what you get in there, Dave. Would they try and clean that out? Could they clean that out with a like a vac truck or something? If you could even get a truck in there in that catch basin and go up the one six or the one fifty. Yeah, I mean, you can try flushing it like you would typically um, with a hydro vac. That's basically right. a truck with like water and they basically pump water into yeah, it and kind of get it slowly. Pressure. And we get our, we get all of our accessible uh, drains pumped every year. Our sewers, a sewer, uh, everything that's on our, on our. Okay. So, so you know, then that's what. Is responsible for, we get that all flushed and cleaned every so year. So you know what we're talking about then, unless I assume that's not a perforated pipe, if it's. If there's holes See, in it, that's not going to help you. That's no. not going to be any good. And I don't know what it is because it was installed many, 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 many years ago from what I know. And, uh, um, you know, like I just heard about it from the guy who, you, the man who used to live in 56, who's now moved away. He said, oh, yeah, way years ago, we went and we dug a trench there so that we wouldn't get water in our backyards. I went, well, okay. <laughs> so that, that was the, the details I had, a trench. I don't even know if they put pipe in but Kent, was that what could do you remember if that that 150 pvc that was that perforated or no or do you even remember i don't know i, I can't remember oh you're on mute i think you're okay. on mute microphone up by eyebrow just because it's up in the air oh <laughs> Kent, you've got your mic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> I, I, I would I would have to go back and check. Her. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, if you had the guys in there flushing, if you do that annually anyways, flushing your other stuff, you could ask them to take a look at that. I don't know what else you do besides dig it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as I say, the conundrum, of course, is that we don't own that property. Anyway, that's our problem, not yours, but but I was just mentioning it because if somebody expert was to come and give us some advice, which we'd welcome very much, <laughs> it was thank you, Curtis, for making that suggestion. You know, we would probably take him back there as well and just say, you know, like, what do you do about this? Like what we're doing right now is we're asking the lady in 44 who has her drain from her um, uh, downspout from her uh, eaves troughing. She's got it extended all the way to the border of her property so that <laughs> yeah. the water ends up in 77th <laughs> backyard. Yeah, so that, that, we've that asked you to shorten the, lot, shorten the pipe, which might help. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the extent of what we've been able to do so far because, uh, because we really have no jurisdiction there. But if we could give some advice and maybe, you know, ultimately some assistance you know, in some way to help them mitigate that, we we would do it, but we need to know what to do. We need to know what it would cost. We need to know if there are implications for hooking it into what what you guys are working on. You know, we don't want to hook it into the wrong thing and start all over again. <laughs> you, know, you know, Gina, I think I think just the the first thing is I, I bet you there's some of those property owners that that share that common back line probably don't even know anything about that 150 PVC pipe. Yeah. So so that's the start. 
the fact yeah. that there probably is one that goes right through the middle of those backyards is is good to know. The second, but we don't know that thing, for sure. I guess we never well, actually right. saw. It. Yeah, right. Yeah. We don't know that, but but you know, in people's minds, if they think that maybe there that goes right across from left to right or right to left, well, then maybe maybe then the the uh, the the homeowners get together and agree upon themselves to dig it up and put in a proper trench. Yeah. Maybe 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 Kent, separate from this project, uh, maybe Kent's uh, firm can go in and and advise and recommend and pro uh, and and uh, price what it would cost to go put a new system in there, separate from what the city's doing. Yeah. But at least while the boys are out there and they're the ones with the expertise as far as who knows what's going on in the area, that's something you could have a sidebar with. It's almost like when you know a street is being repaved and then often these these paving companies they'll have little side deals with the property owners about the driveways being done with driveways yeah same kind of a situation here yeah right yeah. there's an opportunity while the city is out there with whoever's going to be the contractor doing the work for the city's work there may be an opportunity for them to tag on and i i don't want to put the city out there as being responsible for it no but this is the time and the best time in my opinion to get that just that situation there showing the the uh, that 150 pvc pipe have looked at yep that's a really good idea curtis because as you say the experts are all in the area they're doing the work there the equipment's there it may not be a huge extra that we would pay to have that done um i will be bearing in mind since i basically hold the financial responsibility right now for the with the board um i will bear that in mind and i will also bear in mind that you know what we can spend if anything else being about water line breaks which is what we started to talk about on the other area of candlewood lane where they're going to be doing the jackhammering because that still concerns me and just bringing it back around to that um i don't know what we can do i i understand kent what you're saying entirely uh, you know, we we don't know what's already broken, so we're not going to agree to fix it. Is basically right. what you're telling me. <laughs> it's, it's it's you know what we you can do a pre pre blast survey or pre construction survey and looking at foundations, taking pictures and documenting issues. Yeah. But you underground infrastructure is a completely different cat. Like I mean, you we we have you can have water main lakes in the city that could last years until they come to the surface. You know what I mean? It's just, it's yep. the nature of it. And your backyard issue, I mean, the problem with that is everybody's got a fence and a shed and pools and everything else. I mean, th that's not like to replace that 150 PBC. You, you know, you double the size that job for, because I mean, the restoration costs would be off the charts because it's yep. so much. I mean, and, and the people I know it's, would have we weren't looking at that when we, when we did the study, what we're looking at is we're looking at storm water that's getting into the sanitary. Yep. This is storm connected into the storm. So that 150 PVC was really not a concern of ours because we know it's already tied into a storm sewer system. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking more, you know what I mean, Curtis? We were looking at the ones that were, where the storm catch base was tied into a sanitary manhole where that was the focus of the study. I and mean, that's where the, the project initiated from. Yeah, so. yeah. And we're fortunate that there's not fences most, most of the way along there. But anyway, it's something that, you know, perhaps we can talk off on yeah. Kent about, and uh, yep. you know, it's something else that maybe we can have a look at before the project actually, st actually starts and see if there's yep. anything that could be done that might be tagged on with us talking independently to the contractors and saying, hey, while you're here, um, do you know who it is yet? No, you haven't done it. No, anything. no, we haven't no. got a tender yet. Yeah. So we're hoping to tender the job over the winter. Right. And uh, and then start uh, do the construction next summer. That's the plan. Okay. Spring. <laughs> yeah. Spring. <laughs> after the flooding's over. Yeah. Right before, you know, after like you know when it stops raining. But yeah, usually contract. when we start construction, uh, yeah, we usually it's late April when the construction season starts up. But uh, yeah. depending on where we get in the queue uh, of the contractors list of jobs they have, yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. contractors too won't start until May 15 till the weights are off. 
Yeah. Because, you know, when you're hauling gravels and stuff like that, you have to do undersides lows and there's no economics in doing that. So especially this job where there probably will be, you know, your full trench and stuff like that. There's yeah. going to be a lot of gravel. Yeah. So, so, so Gina and, and folks that are listening. Uh, so what I would anticipate on doing is, is getting some, some good sketches from, uh, from uh, our Kent and, and those guys that will, that will show the, the areas that we need to acquire easements in. I'm going to be focusing first and foremost on the area where we want to replace that existing uh, pipe in the ground in between the units. That, that'll be our primary focus over over further to the back where the parking spaces are that would be that would be a nice benefit but you know time permitting and, and resources we're going to first and foremost focus on on that pipe going up through the ground there up up towards University Ave so I'll be I'll be uh, coming with with um, a rudimentary offer a straightforward offer it'll be the same for everybody uh, it'll be It'll be showing the sketch, the easement area. It'll be stating that the city's going to reinstate everything uh, to to the same or better. It's going to say that we're going to pay for the legal fees, and and you hear my dog in the backyard now. Good for um, you. <laughs> so, um, so so that'll be our primary focus. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that we'll be a, we'll be approaching those owners when we get those sketches. Okay, and you know who all those owners are, eh? Would you like us to pave the way for you by sending them a little bit of information in advance? None of them are on this call. None of them will know anything about this or understand what's going on. So it might be an idea for Susan and I to work out something, a simple explanation of what this is all about and say that they will be hearing from you at some point about arranging an easement over their various parking lots. It's mostly parking spots and yeah. a little bit of the common area parking lot, yeah. uh, which, you know, you'll have to talk to my board about. Uh, but, but yeah, you know, so, I mean, it, because none of these people are on the call uh, and some of them are, are newcomers to Canada, so it'll be, it'll bear a little explanation, I think, although maybe not. Uh, but anyway, yes. Um, you know, we're going to have to, it might be good that they get a little summary explanation on what the project is going to be. So Susan and I can work on that and knowing once we know your timing and we could just make sure that they are informed. I mean, or Susan could even do it independently of me, but I think it would just be useful if somebody gave them a little bit of a Coles Notes version for you who are old enough to know what Coles Notes are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yes. and, and just, just Somebody, so you know, Gina, I'll I'll be uh, you know <laughs> you'll know in advance of us uh, communicating with those owners. Yeah. Uh, just to give you the heads up because you'll you'll benefit from that as well, I'm sure. And yes, I mean we can we can check online to see who the property owners are. We'll get we'll get that information from Service in Brunswick. So yeah. and we'll be able to brief them again on on the project. Okay. Uh, we're yeah. not going to ask them to sign the dotted line without knowing what the project's all about. So yeah. And and I would suggest that you advise them if they can to to uh, go online and and uh, listen to the recording and and uh, get a better understanding as well absolutely absolutely so the on the left hand side picture there pid 004 yep. that's 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 property maintenance property yes yeah, so, so that, that, so that sk9 is the two properties that's owned by the association that are outside of the the lots that we're going yeah. through or the you know, the uh, parking spaces we're going through. So that would be the first one that Curtis would do. And then these would be the individual property lots. And we basically have taken a distance off of the center line of the pipe that we figure would be activating. Right. We may destroy more, we may didn't, but we always restore. But as Curtis says, I like, which I like to hear is uh, as good, if not better. <laughs> yeah. And these are the oh, individual. I've seen that in other places where you've done the work. It's, it's yeah. Oh yeah, there's no, you there's very no. Very nice job. You, you, you have exacting, uh, um requirements yeah. for your contract well, they, 
it, it is it's like anything where i mean the amount of money that you invest into your restoration is small compared to the amount of money that you're putting in the infrastructure in the ground so but everybody believes in the end it's if it's green and black it's good shape you know what i mean it's, so it's extremely important contractors are very you know good at it and a lot of them use sub out to professional companies that do you know obviously asphalt and then you have your restoration most of the asphalt like the restoration isn't even done by the general contractor now they have subs that come in and that's their like yeah. maritime hydro seat and that's their business right so yeah yeah well seen putting sod down all along university avenue after the yep yeah, you know, the sidewalks went in. Yeah, yep. it's nice. Looks good. Yeah. Well, good. I mean, I, 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 I've expressed the concerns that our board had, so you're aware of them. I yep. thank Curtis for endorsing the fact that perhaps we should have some uh, pre-construct, pre-work. Um, um, shoot, <laughs> you know. Go in and have a look to make sure that you're not going to have to fix anything that was already there. We call yeah. that consulting. <laughs> <laughs> Long phrase for a small word. Yeah, I think that that may be worthwhile considering what Anne said about the. Yeah, no, that's good to know about that. Uh, yeah, that that definitely wouldn't hurt just to do some uh, pre-construction survey yet, for sure. Yeah, there you go. Um, down so I can know what to say it next time. <laughs> did did anyone else have any questions on uh, this project or for us? Sorry, I was late, but thank you very much. This has been very interesting. Oh, no worries. No, I'm glad everyone could join. I guess we all have to learn to pivot with all the new rules and regulations. Like I said, <laughs> typically we do this in person and it kind of be a drop in session, but um, I, I was asked location too. We always used to have a lot of them upstairs in the rinks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Our open houses, and you guys would have been none of you would have to even drive. You could have walked across the street. Across the street, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I was asked. I was asked by our traffic engineer to, while I have everybody on the call, and Gina mentioned this, I think, earlier too, because uh, Gina was sending an email along. Uh, Gina expressed some concerns with uh, people parking on Candlewood Lane. And, and allowing parking on Candlewood Lane. And my tra the traffic engineer for the city asked me to ask this question. I said specifically, what's the question I'm asking? And he said, are you concerned if we restrict parking on one or both sides? I guess, I don't even know if you can fit both sides, but if, you, if we restrict parking on Candlewood Lane, does anyone, well, there's only, I guess, five of you here tonight, but does anyone have any issues or concerns with that? Just taking this opportunity to talk to the group about that. I highly endorse the restriction of parking on Candlewood Lane because uh, in the winter time you cannot get through with a large vehicle and it's dangerous. And I agree. <laughs> and hey, also, too, also pipe too, up. Yeah, it's not just the winter time. No, we have a hard time getting in around that corner. And there was a moving truck there the other day. It makes it very hard for people to come in Candlewood Lane, but also you can't walk Candlewood Lane. It's not that's safe. No. Yeah. It's you see really that white car that's there? Yep. Yes. That car. And usually <laughs> there's another one right there too. It makes it, it looks wide enough there, but it really isn't. It makes it really difficult to get around that corner. And that car or another one is always there. Yes. Summer, yes. winter, it's there. And you can't get around it. Yeah. And we have small children now living in the area. And with the cars, they come out between the cars. We're just oh, lucky there hasn't been an accident. We yeah. are. We're very Fair. lucky. But everybody has parking spots. We own them. Yep, but they won't park in them. That's part of the problem. Is it is it they don't park in them, or a lot of them just to have the one spot and two cars? They don't want to walk. <laughs> their primary car, <laughs> their primary car, car is in front of their house. Mm. Yeah, that's the, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah, I mean, every time I've been there, it's that whole side of that road is full. Yeah, it, I mean, and it's you always hold full. A car and knock on the door in front of the where the car is. Ninety times, nine times out of ten, they own the, they own the car at that spot. Mm. 
Yeah. And just parking there because they're lazy. And I could do the same where I was, right? Because yep. I could park right there and walk into my house. But I park my parking spot all the time. It's just, I'm just going to put it out there. I know there's might be people on here who do park on the road all the time. It's, it's, it's dangerous, as Laura has pointed out. You know, you you have to watch. If there's children. Some people drive too fast. I'm walking down there with my dog, and I'm afraid, you know, one of us is going to get run over. It's, and in the wintertime, the plow will get to that parking lot you, that you're going to dig up. He'll get mm -hmm. that far. He'll look down the road, see all the cars parked there, the big plow, you know, the big truck with the plow in the front. He'll pull into that parking lot, turn around, and leave. Yep. Because he can't go through there without risking damaging the cars, and he's not going to do that. And I've mm -hmm. talked to the plow guy. And asked him, he said, I'm not going down there because if I hit a car, I'm done. But I mean, the city of St. John, I'm pretty sure, has a bylaw of on-stream parking during snowstorms. You're not allowed to. Like I, not, I, No, not anymore. Not anymore. Only when there's a snow ban. So there's only a snow I, ban. I believe that's only in the South Peninsula. No. Like I've been, I've been ticketed where I live in Forest Hills for on-street parking during a storm, snowstorm. There was a ban on it. The Pardon city, me. in its ultimate wisdom, refused to do anything about parking on Candlewood Lane. Mm -hmm. And they widened the road and repaved it. They specifically took down the no parking signs that were up yeah. in part of, a, part of the lane. It was never done properly. But um, they specifically refused. They widened the road and they said it's wide enough now. And if you, um, you can park on both sides of the road. Oh my heavens. Yeah, I don't know where they see that. You want to know something that's really funny? Drive along the very first part of Candlewood Lane before you turn around to go to the back. <laughs> There's no parking signs there. Yeah. There's no, par that is definitely the widest part of the road and there are no parking signs there, <laughs> but there are none around the corner. Yeah, they forgot to take those down and right? they took the others down and not those. It's yeah, because this bizarre. Isn't this, the whole thing is bizarre. Isn't this going to uh, cause a problem next spring when the construction, if you have cars parked along the side of the road? Yes. Be there. This is going to create a problem. Oh, once we're there, they'll know we're no, there. But for I'm at the end of Candlewood. Yes. I have to go the distance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm at the end of Candlewood. So I have to go the distance and with the construction and you are going to do construction in my area. What number are you? 109. 109. So you're back up into this yeah. area. Here. Uh, you, we're going to open just, it up to two way traffic. Are you just to let you know, there's about four to five homes along my area that have some pumps. They yes. do have water problems. So I just hope Half that the houses in St. John have some pumps. So yeah, yeah. really? Yes. Yeah, mine has mine has a major, big, gigantic sump pump and uh, an internal drainage tile system. Yeah, but but one of the things about making it two way at the entrance there and probably at the other end is um, that's great. Except for a lot of people already it's just temporary. No, Gina. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just trust doing it. Like me, trust me that p some people would think it's two way now. Yes, I see. I, 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 I consider myself guilty. I pulled in yes. the wrong way myself. I, you know, when I, we first started the job, I didn't realize. Well, it, yeah, so. but you didn't know, but people who live there and park there on both ends. Well, I know now maybe it's just lazy. <laughs> I'll be lazy. <laughs> and the wrong way. And yeah. you know, also too, the problem with the land in here, it's clay base. Yeah. And yep. you know what clay does. It holds clay and rock. Yeah, yeah, clay and, and rock. And it, it, yep. uh, my our front lawn a few years ago we had it all dug up even though it belonged to property maintenance we paid the cost we had it dug up took the clay out put good earth in crushed rock and what have you and we haven't had problems with water because the clay holds the water yeah. but we did that at our expense but it pays off in the long run you know yeah so 
Yeah, I mean, it's the geography of the area that you're yes. in. I mean, it's, yeah, you're yes. in a clay area that you're relatively yeah. low. You got a hill up above you. I mean, yes. I, we looked down, I think me and Susan had this conversation, was in behind all these 97, there's a drain all in the back there. I mean, I guess if I was a, I lived there, I would have put that drain in too because it's right. a great big hill above it that comes down and all that water collects in there. You dig a hole to put a foundation in in clay, it's just the one point of least resistance. That's where the water is going to want to go. That's, that's why people right. have Well, that's where, where my place is. That's exactly yeah. why I yep. had to, because there was no, there is no drainage behind right. my place. But I have all the water that comes down the hill. Yep. It all gathers at 61 Candlewood Lane in my basement. <laughs> I mean, it, this is not going to alleviate all your problems no. with no, storm no, water. No. But I mean, there is the section between 107 and uh, back there and as well as there that you now have a good solid outfall to that you know what i mean we may not the pipe maybe go up 20 feet and collapse for all we know but we're going to have it hooked up so that if there is water coming in those properties it'll go in and it'll go, in, go into a controlled storm sewer system and not into the sanitary system so right that's well, the we, get, we have all new pipes behind 107 yeah i, I think they're, those new. are relative no there's even like a stone kind of uh uh, trench there too that, that must have all been put in stone I believe uh, like, when they took it all up they they did you know the right thing when they put that, that was clear. the water line that was the water line and when they did the water line of course they put the proper fill in yeah. behind the homes right. afterwards yeah. oh. um, which is why it cost $35,000 but it's so nice Gina <laughs> <laughs> I know well that's the problem is we may end up having to make it nice all over the place and it's it's very expensive as i was saying to them earlier you know thirty five thousand dollars to do your row and that was what over 10 years ago now yes you know so to do another row that way and that's water lines not not that doesn't do anything about um surface water uh that's water line going into your home but you know it would be at least fifty thousand dollars to do any other oh, row yeah. And, and when you count the fact that we'd have to replace sidewalks and front yards, it would be a right. huge amount. So anyway, that's that's our concern about that. I know that I understand where the city's coming from when they can't fix what they don't know isn't already broken. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I get that. But um, some of the other issues, if we could have help with them, that would be great. And um uh, you know, even in the terms of advice, and then maybe once we know who the contractor is in terms of consultation, we would do that, uh, you know, to find out if there's anything that can be done about some of these other issues that tie into what you're improving for us. Because, you know, if we're having these improvements, if there's a possibility of uh, taking advantage of that, we certainly would do it if we can afford it. Well, we definitely will. Like like Ken said, we always give out like the pre-construction notice typically like at least a week prior to us getting there. And yeah. it will say in that who the contractor is, or like I say, um, you guys have my number and my email address. Um, I could definitely let you know if you want to talk to someone in advance, or again, they'll be out there. Once you award the contract, you know, confidentially, if you want to tell me and I could tell our board and we could approach them. No, it'd, it'd be announced in the city council. Oh, okay. The council well, there, okay. It. Yeah. Yeah. So go. So you know, maybe a consultation with Kent's people. Yep. You know, offline from this. Yeah. But, One you know. thing I will say: most contractors that we work with, like, uh, they will not do private work. Oh, you know, okay. because and then just the simple fact that, as Susan knows, um, we have a limited amount, especially the heavy civil contractors in the city. I mean, you get your Galbraith and Fairville Construction, Terex, and different ones like that. Those guys are like, as people can see uptown, they're flat. Yeah, out. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're still putting concrete down and paving streets, and it's November. I've seen us have ice storms in November. So, I mean, yeah. the amount of work just that been they do. Princess Street. They yeah. They, well, they're no, they're not. They're Princess Street. They're still putting curb down on the other side on over by Crown Street and putting, they still have to do the seal asphalt. So, contractors are straight out. And when yeah. you say, okay, we want you to do a week's work. A lot of times they won't do it just because their schedule is so tight, you know, and they bid jobs to, you know, with the city and they just one after another. Like, yeah. you know, like we, we, we you're chasing contractors. And yeah. I mean, in that type of work that these guys do, these guys are 
big, big. Like when the machinery comes in here, it's not going to be what they're digging a water line with. These things are going to be massive. Like the the rock hammer that you see there is going to be frightening. It'll be 12 feet long because it's it's not small work. It's heavy work. So it's a little bit different than what you're going to be used to. But that's what they do. They're professional contractors that do that big, heavy work. So. Yeah. Yay. Um, how long yeah, you... I know. I, 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 I'm sometimes negative, Gina, just, but I don't want people <laughs> to have Realistic, not negative. I'm realistic. You're telling it, us the way it is. <laughs> it, it, well, the, 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 I mean, there's, the work that we do when you're putting in water, sewer, and storm stuff is, is, is ugly work. And when it's done, it's beautiful work, but it's just hard. It's, it's, you know, the rock we have in the city, like, Milledgeville conglomerate rock, like Kurt has mentioned. Uh, so when we do up, I do an engineer's estimate and give it to Susan. In there, the price I carry for rock is double anywhere else I carry in the city, just because of the historical fact that every contractor that lives in the city knows about Milledgeville conglomerate rock. It's they have nightmares about it. <laughs> Pardon me. If you don't pay them enough, they're not going to come. <laughs> no, they literally like they're the contractors in the city have nightmares about Milledgeville conglomerate rock. They've all lost a lot of money trying to beat it out and stuff like that and it's tough 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 work oh so. look at the seabird on the corner of daniel and millage yes a yeah. really good example <laughs> but it's it's everywhere down there and, yeah. and many people have looked at it and said oh i can get through that easy and no it, they don't it just <laughs> you beat it with big hammers and it turns to dust so yeah yeah and you can't really get dust gone as quickly <laughs> No. Anyway, well, yeah, so, okay, well, that's good advice, too, so maybe we'll just look for the advice part from you, and if we decide to do anything about some of this, if we can afford it. Well, you can talk. ask, too, uh, you can ask, Gina, like, if you want to ask the contractor, but I guess so. I can't say and don't. Don't count on it. Don't get your hopes up. We're not going to have any money left anyway after you break all the water lines in front of that. <laughs> well, the, uh, I mean, they're never anything that we break that we is directly the contractor will be directly responsible for that it's in our trench or anything like that. But something 50 meters away, uh, it's pretty hard to say, you know, sure, you, you have a leak when they're doing John Cadu, but, you know, how could you really ever prove that that was caused by that? Right. So those, like those, uh, those water lines are probably seven meters away at the most. Yeah. <laughs> just, just for, some context. Yeah, they're right in front of those, those townhouses. So this, the, the street's slightly over six and a half meters wide. I've been told. So, yeah. Yeah. so you know, so the half of that plus maybe another. So yeah, we're talking maybe not more than eight meters probably to the wide water lines. Yeah, and I mean rock sometimes can be a, a barrier too. You know, because yeah. you, you, we we have more issues with ground that's so soft that, you know, it just keeps collapsing in on us. And yeah, and that's trench boxes, at least rock, you can control the size of your trench and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to be putting down those what you call trench boxes. I'm learning all this new terminology. Probably like, not here because we don't have to in rock because, because rocks, right? rock, rock literally <laughs> makes a very good trench box. Yes, I would think, especially. Yep. Milledgeville conglomerate rock. Yep. It that doesn't pipe, collapse. That pipe that you guys put along the back of 107 and, and 109 and 111, is that just like fairly shallow, like a perforated pipe? Is that what you put in there? No, no, that's water line. But there is a perforated oh, drain line in there. There is a perforated drain. I see it goes a little further yep. out. Yeah. No, what we've got, what we put in uh, a little over 10 years ago, if you want to scroll that down just a bit. Yep. Um, is is a water line along the back of the property because this this row and the first rows you come in to our complex are the only two rows where the water line comes and goes along the back of the property instead of along the front of the property. The front of the property is all common ground, so the water line is on common ground. But on that row and the first row from four to eighteen, the water line actually goes along the back of the property, but we still hold, we still feel responsible to replace any of the line there because people are paying a fee to have us put a portion of the fee away to repair water lines. So we don't differentiate, even though those are on private property. So we actually did dig up everybody's backyard there 
and put in new water line. That other line that's going along there, uh, part of it probably was dug up when this other job was done because of the proximity. But as you go further up to like 121, 119, it probably wasn't touched. But down here behind Laura's, which is 109 and 107, it may have gotten dug up. So then it probably was replaced as part of the work that was done on the water line, which runs directly. It's about maybe four feet out from the back of the four to six feet out from the back of the property and runs, you know, parallel to the property to the back. I was just wondering if you had any issues with the properties when you were doing that work or was it quite shallow? I was thinking it was just perforated pipe there. I guess I didn't realize you also just recently put in water line there too, but yeah. I guess it's a lot smaller. Yeah, no, what we find mostly when we dig up for the water line is when they dug the holes for the tra for the foundations for all these places, they dug it large enough to put the lines in those same holes. So when we dig up now, we don't run into any rock. It's clay. Okay, so like whatever they put back in, they didn't do a very good job of because there's clay there now. Yeah. But but, you know, so we're going through, we're not going through rock when we're digging up for repairs of water lines. We've never encountered rock yet. Yeah. Like, well, we wouldn't because they wouldn't have put the, you know, they would have had to dig to put the water lines. So no. anyway, we're not encountering any, that. what we don't know is how far out it goes. Like we don't dig any further out towards the street than we have to. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't dig a whole front yard up just to do a water line that's six feet from the foundation. Yeah. You know, no. so we don't know how far it may go right to the curb. We don't know. Mm. Yeah, the, all the water lines that you see on our drawings there is basically the records that we could find. Yeah. You know, there was like a lot of times I think when you guys did your prepare, some of the city guys might have kept notes and done little sketches of it and different things like that. So yeah. that's where that comes from. Right? Gina gave us a plan too there. Yeah, um, that's right. You gave yeah. us a plan. Yeah, all the stuff that that's you guys really done. funny old plan yeah yeah so anyway you know i mean we're we're slowly improving our water line infrastructure is all we've really worked on so far we've never we've done some very small work on our um groundwater yep we did one in behind 93 uh university because we had to it was completely destroyed and we had to we had to do something about it so we did so that would be further that way yeah 90 Oops. Yep. Right here. Yeah, right there. So there's, you see, there's a, there are two there. Yep. One's in that little trench thing. The other one behind it, we replaced and brought it into that trench one. The one that's in that concrete. You yep. were probably there and saw that little concrete thing that that one's in the bottom of. Well, that other one was, we didn't even know what it was supposed to be. So Jeff arranged to have it redone properly because there was a lot of water gathering in there and since there already was one and we're responsible for, to re repair any existing stuff that's already there we did that one yep. right even though it was on private property it's it's a you can understand i'm if you, you know if you're listening closely you can understand it's a pretty fine line and you know our responsibility is for private for common ground but there are a couple of exceptions the water lines behind people's houses because we're still you know have agreed uh you know because of our, our how we collect our fees and what they're for we still hold responsibility for for existing infrastructure for the uh, existing which was in there when the place was built water lines and the few um catch basins and so on and sewer right and all that 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 that's under our property so that's part of our maintenance fees okay unfortunately because <laughs> now that it's getting older it's getting expensive but anyway so that's the whole picture you've heard a lot of this from me before so yeah. anybody else uh, have any questions it's just me, Ann, and Laura left. There was oh, one. Uh, yeah. There was one other person that asked for a Tina or Tracy. Sorry. Yes. Tracy had asked for an invitation, but I don't think she ever got on. Okay. 
maybe she didn't make it. I guess she didn't. I didn't. I didn't notice her come on. Well, I would no. have let her in. I don't. She used to always have an appointment on Tuesday evening, so it could be that she uh, she still has that appointment on Tuesday evening. She's a member of the Sea Bells. I don't know if they're practicing these days, but it always was on Tuesdays. I think. Um, I'll. I'll. If she makes any inquiries about it, I'll let her know that she can watch the YouTube. And you've sent the link already for the YouTube, I think, and I'll, I'll make sure that everybody gets that email. So yeah, they, they so just on that, I guess, um, this is recording now, so Polly, Polly won't get up, like, I just give me a chance to get the, I'm going to ask communications to post that, so yeah. it won't be, like, right after this meeting or anything, but hopefully they'll be able to post it for me tomorrow on the website. Yeah, just send yeah. me a quick, a quick email when it's up. Yeah, I can do and, that. And um, if you wouldn't mind, if it's not too much work, uh, to do a very quick kind of, like I said, Cole's note version of what the project is, that I could do sure. that as an introduction, because I think some people just had no idea, right? You know, we can't get to everybody with emails and so on. And, and uh, so, you know, I will try again to give people more of an explanation of what this is really entailing. And, um, and then yep. they can, you know, once they know what what it's about they may be more interested in finding out more about it and then you know the questions will start <laughs> yeah but if they watch the whole thing they're going to see that we've addressed most people's concerns because you know i've i've thought a lot about it and and you know i've lived through a lot of the infrastructure problems here over the last 20 years so yeah you know 18. yeah there's a lot going on in this uh, area <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there, it's. I mean, it was like it's, when we did the study trying to find where pipes go, and you know, you go a certain distance between Woody at the city, and we were doing videos and everything. It, it, it's just, it's a spider web. And what it is is people have had drainage problems in that area, and they've just gone and put pipes in and tied them into everything. And yeah, it's, it's not uncommon. So no, I mean, they just no. That's right. And you know, the these play back back in the day. There wasn't much out here, no, right? No, that's right? You know, so you know, I mean, they they used what was available, right? And didn't wait for the city to put more infrastructure in for them before they could use something else, which is why, you know, um, surface water went into sewer and so on, you yeah. know, because there wasn't a lot of options. But now you're doing this, you know, you're taking a look at it and you're doing it properly, and you're yeah. trying to get a lot of. Problems. What happens is a lot of places like the city of St. John, I mean, one of the biggest development areas is University Avenue. So every time you add more buildings or more houses or whatever to to the system, that storm water becomes a bigger problem <laughs> because and you I want was, to remove it to get capacity, really. And also back in the day, in fairness, I mean, that's what yeah. was done. Everything was combined and that was just that's the way it was. And. But then, you know, newer standards and newer everything. And so now we're kind of going back and undoing what was done. But back in the day, that's just what was done. It was no big, you know, you thought your stormwater was flushing out your sanitary sewer. So that was great. Yeah. yeah. And well, it didn't matter to... where everything went anyway, right? Because nobody just... was really asking any questions about it. Right. So if you're not telling us anything the neighbors here don't know about University Avenue and the amount of development. As a matter of fact, that's mm. some of the people who've been here for a while. That's a bigger a big concern of theirs because yep. every time something new is proposed to go up here, the same people ask the same questions about the impact on the infrastructure. And you know, we're seeing it right now with that new building that they're putting over in the Shannocks. Um, oh yes. Yep. You know, that's a whole new, there's all new lines going in there, right? They, they've dug it all up and they're putting new, I'm assuming that they're water and sewer lines and, and so on, you know, and what they had to do to even build there you know, with the ponds that they had to put in the back and so on, because that was basically a wetland. Um, you know, we we know, you know, that somewhere along, somewhere along the line, you know, it's just going to be too much. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's, uh, it's like, I mean, Milledgeville, that area, you know, is especially down towards where Shannox is. The biggest part of that is already pretty much fully developed out. Yeah. And the city, you know, the city does when they do their designs and models, they they plan for those lands to go from, you know, grass space to, uh, you know, asphalt and roofs and stuff like that. 
and it, it, you know, it, it is all planned out, but it, you know, like when you look at that, that, like the detention, one of the big things, the city has a storm water management plan. So any new developments, so if you go to deal it and what the, the most common thing that you get out of the plan is you have a, a pre development and a post development and the amount of water that comes off that line pre development. Once you're done your development, you can't surpass it. That's why you see them holding detention ponds because they can't increase the, increase the amount of water going into the city infrastructure because it was sized back when, you know, when put in probably when not all that was developed. So that's right. That's exactly. And that's what, you know, we know that's why they've got those ponds. Yep. Right. Because they had that was a very wet area and they had to do something about it. Well, Boar's Head Road out there. You've seen oh. the pond there. Yeah, and it's they huge. want to put more. They want to put yes behind the, the, and they want to put something on the corner of Woodward and Bo- Boar's Head now, or just up from it. But it's not quite in the same area. I think it's more on Woodward. Yeah, that was probably be for private, like that one in Boar's Head Road. That's the city's pond. Oh, I yeah, that's yeah. Huge. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and, and a lot of people always complain about them. They say there's never any water in them. Well, they're not supposed to have water. <laughs> they only have water when we get a like a one in a hundred year storm and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. That's when you appreciate them. Yeah, the ones behind the Shannox have water in them all the time. But what's interesting is they also have quite a bit of wetland around them. And you're seeing beautiful, beautiful red winged blackbirds. Oh, yeah. You sure. know, nesting in there and ducks in there. And, you know, it's. Yeah, you Dave's, know. Dave's a stormwater expert. And there's two types of pond there's detention and retention. So yeah. we do mainly, a, what is it, detention, Dave? That's where they fill up and then empty. Yeah. Yeah. And retention is where they hold the water. They yeah. have a bit of water left in them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got both, I think, over there behind Shannox. But anyway, or else one of them just holds all the water all the time. But but anyway, yeah. So, yeah, I, I can imagine it's a challenge, you know, when you go from rock to bog and yeah. you know, block <laughs> which yeah. is that, with clay in between. It's, you know, yeah, it's it's an interesting area here. I mean, it must have made great farmland where it wasn't rock, but. Anyway, yep. that's what it was <laughs> back in the day. So anyway, yeah, if you could do that, Susan, <laughs> send me a little bit of a description with the link to the YouTube. I'll get it out to people who missed it. Yeah, and sure. We also, have, we also have a Facebook group for the people who choose to join it. So again, you know, usually when we have new owners move in, we invite them to join the Facebook yep. group and so on. So we'll get them to do that. And uh and then, you know, we'll be going on with the, you'll be looking for the easements and so on. And this will all happen. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm no longer living on Candlewood Lane. You're, yeah, you were saying. You're, still, like, <laughs> you're the only person I know that moves out of the area and still stay, keeps on all the responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Some people think I'm pretty crazy and, and I agree, <laughs> but there's nobody willing to take it on and I'm not about to leave them high and dry. So until we work that detail out i'm i'm the person that still does everything and look at me the last person on this meeting with you guys well, laura's, laura's still there <laughs> i'm hanging in here <laughs> I, sorry, I missed you there right you were on my screen you're next again i missed you yeah, yeah and laura's on the board so you know yeah. <laughs> people right here <laughs> on the board right but yeah but no, I won't abandon them in their hour of need. If I am really happy, I'm not going to be there next year. No. I'll just walk through and walk and have a look and be thankful that I can only just barely hear the rock pounding from the top of Noel Avenue because that's where I am now. <laughs> and well, we can hear it there from Seabird, which is on the corner of Daniel and and oh, yeah. uh, Millage. So I know I'll be able to hear Candlewood Lane. Oh, yeah. It, it, oh, the sound yes. carries extremely long, long way. So, yeah. We're used to it, though. <laughs> yeah. We're we well trained seven after o'clock, seven o'clock. Every... Yeah. First, yep. they did they first they did the uh, Rocky Terrace, then they did all those up there in Noel. And now they're doing that seabird place. It's just getting closer and closer. <laughs> now oh, it's yeah. going to be us. Now yeah. it's going to be in their backyard, <laughs> people's backyard, yeah. front yard. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's front yard. But, I mean, the. the, the it, it will be, I mean, it's, it's, it'll be slow going through Candlewood Lane, but I mean, the other part will go pretty quick when we go from University Avenue up, yeah. but the other part will slow it right down. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. That's what we have to look at and say, you know, we're going to get a nice new pavement. And yep. There will be some 
bed. Just, we're not getting my new water line, though. I really should hold out for that. <laughs> you, you, that other guy, you got to talk to him. He, that's a Kendall guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kendall's in charge. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's missing a perfectly good opportunity to give us our money's worth finally. Like, why would you not want to do that except for you having to give us our money's worth finally? <laughs> He's a hard nut to crack. <laughs> I know. You know what we should have done, though, and we probably would have been able to do that, is when we brought the line behind Laura's row, we should have tried it to tie it into the uh, water line on University Avenue from the 121 end. Because mm -hmm. if you scroll over there, what happened today is when we had to turn the water off because 60 had a water line break, we turned everybody from 60 to 121 off. No water. 60 to. For him. Yeah. 60, only, which is. Yeah, it was only for maybe three place. hours. So it wasn't too bad. No, I know, but still, sometimes it's, it's long. You have two feet. You have two feeds in the Candlewood? Yeah, two. One's at the corner there of where, where we are right now there. One is at in front of 60 or next door well right there by 60 oh yeah okay? and it goes yep. along and the other one is at the corner of university where you come in from university in candlewood it's one of those dots there next to ann's place the lady that was talking number four in there and those are the only two but what where we would what we should have asked for was scroll right across to the other end of candlewood lane I think it's on a different picture, actually. What? Sorry, just before you leave this one, is there not one right in the middle? Oh, or no. Was that the same one? Okay. Yeah. So that first one feeds everything west of where your gray thing is, okay? Yep. And then the one that goes in, that's in front of 60 or right next to 60, that feeds everything east of. What about of, that one there in front of 83? Is that one? Oh, that's just for University Avenue. Those, those that one row of eight townhouses. Oh, oh, that's I see. It's not feeding stuff. into this into the area. Okay, yeah. yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, 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 what we should have done if 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 we'd been thinking or if I'd been involved because I wasn't back then, we should have gone to the other end of Candlewood there, where that road it goes up for, um, on an angle from Candlewood to University. It the last bit of it is quite close to university and we should have brought we should have asked the city whether there was any possibility of bringing the water bringing the water line oh i guess your picture doesn't go far enough over from from university to that water line there and that way we would have had these people in this last row with an independent source of water they don't have right now right they're still on the same one that starts at 60 and goes all the way over here mm -hmm. Yeah, see if we could have come in here somewhere. I'm pointing, but nobody can see me, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, into that parking lot where the little blue car is, and yeah, and it in there. Right. You know, that would have been that would have been a really nice solution to a little bit of a problem in terms of trying to make each of these rows at least independent. Mm. We can't do right. We because the lines, the lines. We had two feeds, well, three if you count University Avenue, into the whole complex. So that's uh, that's 56 homes that have two feeds off the city line. Yep. We each One pay. Goes down, they all go down. Yep. And we pay the same as the people up on Crown Hill for our water service. Yeah. <laughs> Want to know the difference? <laughs> I could tell you. You told us. <laughs> yeah, close to $100,000 that you get from us. Maybe not quite that much yet. Maybe more like 85. And you get 22 for the same amount of square acreage. $22,000 from the people up on Crown Hill with their big houses and their swimming pools and their four bathrooms. And, yeah. and, and, and they each have a line into just, their house so they can turn off. Not to, not to split hairs, but <laughs> <laughs> as a taxpayer in the city of St. John, uh, you're paying 
basically $700 a year for your water, 700 for your sewer. So when you say that 85, you got to cut it in half. Okay. Because it, so and, and, and people sewer, people don't, them. <laughs> like when you turn your water tap on, you get something. People seem to know that more than they do when they flush your toilet. But <laughs> the cost to treat that and do all the environmental stuff that you have to do to treat that wastewater is a significant cost, but yeah. it's out of sight, out of mind that people don't see. Yeah. So and people don't understand their sewer bill as much as they do their water bill. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, but in our case, but we'll, we'll split hairs here even more. Almost most of these homes have maybe two people living them. Yep. Maybe one. They've yep. got two toilets. <laughs> yep. I bet there's at least three toilets in almost every house up there on ground. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's <laughs> been an ongoing. Yeah. Anyway, the the point being is, you know, we've we've felt we have felt and do feel hard done by. Uh, it's historical. There's probably not much anybody's ever going to be able to do about it. So we take our our uh, we take what we can get when we can get it, and in the, in the point and the thing about this with this row here, had we been thinking about it, we might have really yeah. pressed hard to have a water line brought in just there. To yeah, that so you're row. thinking to bring it in off of here, uh, yeah. just to tie it into it that way. Yeah. 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 Just so that there would have been uh, at least that row. <laughs> would have been independent from the rest of the mm. thing maybe even the row across the street from them we might have t done those too that would be so we get a third feed into the the whole area right because right now we have two mm -hmm. right so we've got 56 homes with two feeds up in the other area every house has a feed just, just saying <laughs> I'm not going to stop either, you know, <laughs> until I get, you know, until I really don't care anymore and I move out of the city or something. <laughs> and I might be yelling at you from quiz panels. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You're looking at it. You're thinking about it. That's good. That's good. Oh, yeah. It's something about this. It's 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 not an uncommon thing. Like your issue is, you know, oh, how many subdivisions like this are in St. John? It's mind boggling. I mean, we just did a whole study from Wasson Court. Yeah. You know, it's just, there's so many of this historical stuff that you deal with, eh? Yeah. Like you were saying about, Susan was saying about combined sewers. Well, combined sewers is not a city of St. John unique thing. It was all over the world. Like, you know, people did combine yeah, sewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we more conscientious of environmentally treating our wastewater and, you know, we're 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 trying to get better all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Just curious. Wasson Court is a court. Yes. You go in, it's a little circle, and yep, you go up circle, again. Yep. So do they have how are their water lines arranged? There's a water line that goes through there and they do the same thing as you. They have a line that comes off and feeds a whole slew of places. And every time they get a break on one, it takes out everybody. Yeah. Same and it was the same thing. It's right up against the foundation. Yeah, and it was probably put in like they they'll have like a inch and a half line coming in, and then they'll have all these three quarters that are just taken off of it. And, yeah, right. so, yeah, same. Yeah, because they were all built around the same time, and that was a. It may have been the standard, but b. It certainly was whoever was building them it was their standard, right? So, yeah, yep. you know, yeah. But yeah, it's not the it's only like, one. It's, you and Wasson Court's the only one you just can. No, I know there's there's Somerset. High Meadow Park. It just. Oh, High Meadow. Yeah, they've got lots. There's of other problems. ones off a of Loch Lomond Road in in behind St. Anne Street. There, there's just yeah. so many of them. It's just, yeah. I yeah. I didn't realize how many of them until I I get calls from people though. A lot of them, you know, have a water line leak or something like that. So. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not going to keep you any longer talking about this stuff because it's just us now. <laughs> Everybody's left. <laughs> and, and David, who I, I know another David Morgan, who probably you might know David Morgan, David Morgan, but David Morgan used to be the <laughs> principal of Harborview High School. I've heard that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. when I saw you, I was like, not quite as nice looking as David call, Morgan, right? though, eh? <laughs> Does he look, can, can you see his picture, Gina? No. That's why I want How come you can't see, see his see picture? picture? Oh, there. There, look at the beard on him. <laughs> you don't look at all like David Morgan. <laughs> no. Our no David I Morgan. have heard that, though, that uh, 
and and he's a sailor, so you know we call him Captain.